Chapter 62 The Kingdom of God and Its Law Normally, a kingdom has a king, and such a realm has laws. There is no such thing as a kingdom without laws, although, strangely enough, antinomian churchmen do imagine that it can exist. Some evangelicals refuse to call Jesus Christ Lord because lordship means both deity and kingship and supposedly Jesus cannot be king until his supposed millennial return. But, quote, The kingdom of God involves, in a real sense, the total message of the Bible, end quote. In such a realm, quote, God's law is supreme, end quote. This state, however, is not the kingdom of God. The kingdom is a much broader concept than church or state. It is the total rule of God in every area of life and thought in terms of his law. It is a strange fantasy of too many churchmen that there can be a kingdom of God without either the king or his law. In 1 Samuel 8-7, God declares that Israel's desire for a human king was a rejection of God as king. Quote, They have rejected me that I should not reign over them. End quote. In time, the rejections of this king would be also a rejection of his law. John Eliot, the American Puritan missionary to the Indians, organized the Christian Indians during Oliver Cromwell's rule in villages ruled by God's law. The results were excellent, but to Charles II, on gaining the throne, God's law was anathema. As a consequence, the Eliot book outlining his plan was burned by the public hangman and the villages were finished as theonomic entities. Since 1952, the US Supreme Court has dealt similarly with American theonomy. Israel, in rejecting Samuel and God, chose a man in terms of their humanistic ideas. In 1 Samuel 8, God warns Israel through Samuel of the consequences, higher taxes, the conscription of their youth, the seizure of their assets, and more. The godly form of government by elders or captains over families in tens of fifties, hundreds, and thousands would be used to nationalize manpower for the state. Civil government is a religious entity, and the state, no less than the church, is a religious establishment. Because the state rests on a body of laws, and laws govern in matters of good and evil, Every state is an establishment of religion. Which religion is the important question? A prominent modern aberration is the belief that the purpose of Christ's coming was the salvation of individuals, the saving of souls. The New Testament tells us differently. For example, Mark 1.14 tells us that Jesus came, quote, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, end quote, It is very true that entrance into the kingdom of God is by regeneration, by being born again, but the centre of the triune God's purpose is not our salvation, but his kingdom. God's kingdom is a law sphere and he provides the law and he summons his people to obey it. The law is a covenant, a covenant of grace from God to man. The giving of the law is an act of grace and a blessing, a gift from God. To his chosen people. Ancient covenants reflect God's covenant. The greater, God the King, blesses the lesser, a chosen people, with the gift of law, whereby the people are to live and prosper. Ancient rulers gave to their vassal lords a law, land, and the assurance of dynasty supported by them. God the King gave to Israel, later to the new Israel of God, Galatians 6.16, the law, the land, and the Davidic dynasty. For Christians, God's new Israel, the land is now the world, and their Davidic king is Jesus Christ. Obedience to God's law, his grace to us, brings on more blessings. Quote, Obedience to the law is not the source of blessing, but it augments a blessing already given. End quote. In fact, quote, within the Sinaitic and Deuteronomic covenants, law and grace are not antithetic, Law is a gift of the generous, saving God. Through keeping the law, man can experience more of God's grace. End quote. Because of the covenant framework, quote, Law 
is therefore integral to God's saving plan, which is worked out through covenants. End quote. The humanistic law is not a part of any such, quote, saving plan, end quote, nor an act of grace towards us. Moreover, the state is not a person, whereas God is. God's law relates me to him when I am faithful to him and his law, whereas the state has no personal relationship to me. It's a very serious error on the part of the antinomians to treat God's law as impersonal. Early in the Ten Commandments, God declares that he is, quote, a jealous God, end quote, Exodus 25. The idea of such a statement in status law is ludicrous. God's law is his claim for gratitude from a people whom he is blessing by giving his law. Obedience to God's law is gratitude to him. As Wenham pointed out, the covenantal nature of the law makes clear that, quote, Salvation is not based on works, end quote, because the covenant was made with and the law given to a people saved from Egypt. The law was a gift of grace. It presupposes grace, and quote, Law is a means of grace to enter into a closer relationship to their divine king and enjoy more of the blessings inherent within the state of salvation, end quote. God declares in Leviticus 27, quote, Be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God, end quote, and he gives his law as the way of holiness. A man who obeys the laws of New York State and the United States can be called law-abiding, but this does not make him holy. Quote, the law itself is the divine means of creating a holy people, Obedience to it renewed the divine image in man and enables him to fulfill the imperative to be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 11, 44 following, 19, 2, 27, etc. End quote. Every kingdom has its system of law unless it is a satellite state and therefore derives its laws from its overlord. The kingdom of God is no satellite order. Disciplines and realms, without exception, are subject to it. For churchmen to deny God's law to God's kingdom is moral insanity and treason. God the King is the overlord to all men and nations, to all arts and sciences, to all things. His law word must therefore govern all things, for otherwise he is denied and strayed. This present dereliction is an especially radical one. In the arrogance of their sin, these erring churchmen condemn belief in God's law as itself an error. 